Garnell Monroe Moore, missing from Baltimore, Maryland since 2002 when he was seven years old. To think that a kid could spend all those years with no one knowing he's not going to school, it's just so sad. It's like a kid with no one. Today's first installment of Cryptic Encounters is the story of the unresolved disappearance of Garnell Monroe Moore. Born in 1995, Garnell was never raised by his parents since his mother was in prison and his father never kept a steady address and preferred to move around using Harlem Avenue in Baltimore as a home base of sorts. Garnell spent his early years being taken care of by different relatives on his father's side, the most recent relative before his disappearance being his paternal aunt, Belinda Cash. Belinda had no children and started looking after Garnell in 2001, when he was six years old. It appears Garnell's parents still had legal custody, so Belinda taking care of Garnell was an informal arrangement of sorts between family members. Belinda lived in a row house, with Garnell and other relatives in the 3700 block of Harlem Avenue, just south of Gwynn Falls Park on Baltimore's west side. Garnell's half-sister, Latanya Williams, was being raised by an aunt as well, Trina Morton. Latanya never lived with Garnell, but she remembered him as a playful, hyper little boy, who always carried around a toy car or figurine while mispronouncing his aunt's name as Aunt Frina. Garnell would often visit Trina who lived in Northeast Baltimore. Trina was nine months pregnant in August 2001, and she was picking up two of Garnell's sisters on Harlem Avenue. Garnell was playing outside Belinda's home. That was the last time Trina ever saw Garnell again. Trina had planned on letting Garnell stay at her house the next weekend, but she went into labor. A week later, she spoke to Belinda about rescheduling his visit. Belinda told her that she was in the process of moving, so it was not a good time to visit. After this conversation, Belinda and other paternal relatives started becoming hard to get a hold of. Belinda's number was disconnected the next time Trina tried to call it. The new address Belinda supposedly moved to turned out to be fake. Trina tried in vain to look for her nephew. She went door to door in the Harlem Avenue neighborhood asking whether anyone had seen Belinda or Garnell. She called the Department of Social Services, but they told her there was nothing they could do since he had not been deemed a child in need of assistance. Trina also tried gathering information from Garnell's father, Harold Moore, who would visit her from time to time so he could see his two daughters. He mentioned that he knew Garnell was with Belinda but had no way of contacting them. When questioned later by police, he told them he last saw Garnell at an Easter gathering in 2002, possibly 2003. In 2005, Harold gave Trina the phone number of another of Belinda's relatives. Trina was finally able to reach someone at this number. That relative said she had not seen Garnell with Belinda in years, but provided them with a possible address for Belinda. It was a small public housing development in the 4000 block of Old Frederick Road, called the Monastery Gardens Development. Trina and Latanya found Belinda at the address and asked her to show them Garnell. Belinda told them that Garnell was on a school trip to King's Dominion, an amusement park in Virginia, which did not make sense as it was a weekend in June. Trina called social services again and asked whether anyone could check to see whether Garnell was safe at Belinda's house. She was met with the response, we can't just go into people's homes. School she called to check whether Garnell was enrolled there told her privacy laws prevented the disclosure of any information. The Juvenile Services Center could not help her either as she did not have legal guardianship of Garnell. Finally, in March 2006, the Baltimore Police Department's Missing Persons Unit got involved. In April 2006, Detectives went in to search the Harlem Avenue address just in case Garnell had been left behind. The detectives, along with the cadaver-detecting dogs, searched the abandoned house which was badly in need of repair but found no clues. Later in the year, when the homeowner cleared out the property, the detectives and the dogs went back again. Still no clues. They also questioned Belinda's new neighbors at Old Frederick Road who recalled seeing Garnell occasionally 
in 2001 and remembered her calling him her son. When questioned by detectives, Belinda told them Garnell had been living with her, but that she had never enrolled with him in school. She says that in the summer of 2005, it became hard to take care of Garnell as she was having financial problems. So she took him to the social services office at 500 North Hilton Street, near Edmondson Avenue, and left him on the building steps. She says she never saw him again after leaving him there. Belinda agreed to take a lie detector test. The test showed that she was being truthful in answering all but one question. A question that wasn't something that would pin her to a criminal act. Lieutenant Thomas J. Uzorowski, who oversaw the missing department unit at the time, noted that Belinda is hard to pinpoint. She has no significant criminal record and no history of harming or neglecting children. However, he also highlighted the fact that while she was consistently stuck to her story about leaving Garnell at the social services office when talking to police, she has told family members different versions of what happened to Garnell. He did not elaborate on what other versions she told. Prosecutors were working with police throughout their investigation, but in January 2007, the Felony Family Violence Unit stated that they had completed their investigation while underscoring that their search had focused on trying to find the little boy, not necessarily trying to find a wrongdoer, and they've done about as much as they can. The case was turned over to social services and juvenile court. No social services agency in Maryland has any record of Garnell. Employees at the Hilton Street Social Services building never recalled seeing Garnell or any boy for that matter being dropped off on their building steps and checking residences around the building did not turn up any leads either. If Belinda's story is true, Lieutenant Uzorowski surmises that a stranger could have seen Garnell on Hilton Avenue and taken him in as an unofficially adopted child, explaining that the moors of Baltimore are sometimes unique and that city residents do not trust social services and will often take great pains to circumvent the agency. Jerry Nance, forensic supervisor for the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, says his gut feeling tells him that Garnell is alive and can be found. Similarly, Lt. Uzorowski says his detectives are not presuming that Garnell is dead. In a sentiment shared by many, Susan Leviton, director of the University of Maryland Children's Law Clinic, feels the adult world failed Garnell, saying, how can we have a society that doesn't know where a kid is for four years? To think that a kid could spend all those years with no one knowing he's not going to school. It's just so sad, it's like a kid with no one. Garnell remains missing. Anyone with information is asked to contact Baltimore Police Department at 443-984-7385 or 410-396-2284. Questions. Why did Belinda lie about Garnell being at King's Dominion? Garnell seems to have regularly visited Trina. Why could Belinda not have just asked Trina or another relative to take care of Garnell? How did Garnell not fall within the auspices of social services? With Garnell having an incarcerated parent, surely there is some sort of program that is in place for a child in this situation. Lieutenant Uzorowski noted Baltimore residents' lack of trust in social services and how it could create an atmosphere where an informal type adoption could be possible. How likely is this? The links in the description below are essentially all of the information that could be found. A 2015 study showed that although black children accounted for about 35% of missing children's cases in the FBI's database, they amounted to only 7% of media references. Some of the reasons include the fact that law enforcement often classifies children of color as runaways without having all the details. Because those children are considered to have voluntarily left home, Amber Alerts are not sent out about them and they typically are not covered in the news. The last three articles linked below provide an extensive discussion on the reasons or the discrepancy. Please consider learning more about or donating to Peas and their pods. They created the Relia Alert, a missing child alert system which bridges the gap where the Amber Alert excludes or does not engage due to program criteria. Named after Relia Wilson, a four-year-old girl in the Florida foster care system who went missing for over eight months before anyone realized she was gone. The Relia Alert is not a replacement of the Amber Alert, 
but rather an extension created to work for children when the criteria for an Amber Alert is not met. Because the criteria for a Relia Alert is more inclusive, it can often help in finding a child who otherwise may not get the immediate attention necessary. Thank you for watching the video. Please check out the links in the description below for more information on this case. I will see you in the next one.